The Miami Hurricanes might be severely shorthanded against Georgia Tech today, so can they execute any of our keys to victory? You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy game day. I'm Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. 3.30 p.m. today, Saturday, November 12th. The Miami Hurricanes will try and get back to 500 on the year against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. And quite frankly, i um, not saying that this should be a win, but this is the most winnable game left on the schedule, right? Because Clemson on the road next week will be significantly more difficult. And Pittsburgh, to wrap up the season at home, will be more difficult on paper than Georgia Tech on the road. So do the Hurricanes have the horses to get it done? Now, this shouldn't be a huge surprise to anyone. We've been operating on this show for the entire week with the assumption that Tyler Van Dyke is not going to start against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets or even play. And that has basically been confirmed. Pete Thamel, who's one of the most reliable sources out there, is reporting that Tyler Van Dyke will miss this game today against Georgia Tech with a shoulder injury. Okay, so no TVD today. And the way that it's gone over the past few games is no TVD, no end zone. (laughs) The Hurricanes have not found the painted grass in their last nine quarters, right? The only kind of blip on that radar was Jake Garcia with the game-winning two-point play against Virginia, but that wasn't a touchdown and it wasn't in regulation. So nine quarters of regulation, Miami has not found the back of the end zone. And I have to wonder, what's the quarterback split going to look like? Because I I know everyone, myself included, wants to see a lot of Jakari Brown the next few weeks, just so we can take inventory on what we have, okay? Um, You know, I I do have some people sending me messages, and maybe this is fair. Like, you know, why have you completely written off Garcia? Like, he 100% cannot play, and 100% he's going to transfer. Maybe there's a little bit of hope that Garcia can find some confidence and some momentum because even though most of us are more bullish on Brown right now, it's hard to imagine either of those two quarterbacks take 100% of the snaps today. I do expect some sort of a split. And with the way things have gone the last couple of weeks, whoever starts this game might not necessarily be the quarterback who finishes it if they're committing turnovers left and right and struggling to move the football. So I do expect some sort of a split and some sort of a combination today. Um, Drop your predictions below in the comments. You can uh, leave us comments on our YouTube channel if you're watching that way or if you're listening to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey. Why don't you drop us a tweet? If you tweet us at Locked on Canes, uh, we see all of your tweets. We read some of them on the shows. We retweet the ones that are really good. Uh, we will follow you back if you follow us at Locked on Canes. So let me know who you expect to start this game because, I don't know, I got this weird feeling. Um, this is not what I want to happen, but I've got this weird feeling that Garcia will start in this game but he won't necessarily finish this game and he won't necessarily get most of the reps today because I do expect a heavy dose of Jakari Brown, but I'm kind of expecting uh, Jake Garcia to start this one. That's just been sort of the pattern for the last couple of weeks. And listen, um, I also don't think that these coaches want to completely throw in the towel on any chance of winning this game. Now, maybe you could say, but Dono, I think Jakari gives Miami a better chance to win this game. Maybe, but I also know Garcia is more experienced than Jakari is. Uh, And so Miami might want to kind of feel out Garcia first before they bring in Jakari. Because, yeah, as we've seen over the last couple of days, maybe the results on the field are more important to recruiting than these coaches thought or I thought. Okay, so Miami does want to try and win this game where last I checked, they're about a point and a half underdog against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. So my first big key to victory for Miami. And this has been a key every single week, and it will continue to be a key. And this could be a very tough one to execute today, despite the opposition, 
you have got to run the football today. I'm looking again for 150 plus team rushing yards for the Miami Hurricanes. And I'm treading lightly a few hours here before kickoff because there, there has been a report. Uh, it's not been corroborated or confirmed really by anyone of note, but there is a report out there that Henry Parrish may not be suiting up today. That Henry Parrish, who's been Miami's leading rusher this season and most consistent running back, may not play today. I'm just throwing that out there because it's been reported. I have not been able to confirm it, but it is being reported. If that were the case, that significantly takes a punch away from Miami's running game. The Canes would be down to just two scholarship running backs, Jalen Knighton, the rooster. And hey, at least with Knighton, we got a couple positive signs last week, had a couple of uh, explosive runs. I think Florida State's backups might have been in at that point, but he did bust off a 45-yarder uh, last week against Florida State. We got a couple glimpses of last year's Jalen Knighton, so maybe the rooster, who I think has been dinged up for most of the year, is finally getting back near full fitness. And then Thad Franklin is the other scholarship running back, but Thad has been in the doghouse in recent weeks. I don't know any other way to describe his situation. So the pattern in recent weeks, and credit to Lucius Stanley, the walk-on transfer, because he's been pretty good. Lucius Stanley has usually been the next guy up before Thad Franklin. So we could see a steady dose today if the Parrish reports are true. We could be seeing a steady dose today of Jalen Knight. And please just hold on to the football. No fumbles, my dude, because Georgia Tech forces a lot of turnovers. We could see a steady dose of the rooster and a steady dose of Lucius Stanley. And trying to establish the running game, my friends, is another reason why I want to see Jakari Brown get a lot of work because he just adds such a dynamic dimension to Miami's running game. And he can help spark that running attack in Jakari Brown, who, who runs so hard, okay? Um, you know, with Miami's offensive line, it's no secret they've been completely decimated by injury. It was not a deep group to begin with. You know, they've had to deal with without a lot of their best offensive linemen throughout the season and in recent weeks, especially. Miami's run blocking ranks 104th in the country per PFF, which is, yeah, the sign of a banged up O-line with no continuity whatsoever. Uh, but listen, on paper, OK, if Miami can exploit this, but again, potentially down their best running back, and we know that they're down a ton of offensive linemen. Can Miami exploit this? Georgia Tech is not good against the run. They give up 179 rushing yards per game. That's 105th in the country out of 131 uh, D1 schools. That's their rushing defense. So, you know, again, it's going to be hard to exploit that if Miami can't generate any kind of a downfield passing attack. And without Tyler Van Dyke, that won't be easy because Tyler Van Dyke confirmed out. So if Miami can't hit a couple plays downfield, and they should be able to, they should be able to. When you have people like Colby Young and Will Mallory, you should be able to hit some plays down the field. Xavier Restrepo uh, is back and has been back the last couple of weeks. So, you know, you obviously you need to hit a couple plays downfield to keep that defense honest. And on paper, uh, Georgia Tech has not matched up well against the run this year. But again, if this game is going to be won by Miami, it's the heavy lifting is going to have to be done by Miami's defense. And we will talk more about that. Believe me, that's going to come in big in our keys to the game right after we talk about the awesome folks at Underdog Fantasy. Guys, the one thing lately, when Miami has struggled on Saturdays, at least winning cold hard cash with Underdog has brought some smiles to my face in recent weeks. Underdog is the easiest place to spice up college football season. It's so easy to get signed up and to make your selections. It takes under 60 seconds to make your pick up, pick them selections if you want to play the college football games. Guys, uh, I'm looking at in the pick them for today's games. I like LSU quarterback Jaden Daniels higher than 271 and a half passing yards against Arkansas. Arkansas struggles to defend the pass. And I'm going with West Virginia quarterback JT Daniels. So it's all about the Daniels today, but I'm going with him lower than 261 and a half passing yards against Oklahoma. Uh, Daniel's stats have been all over the place. He threw for just 81 yards last week. Oklahoma actually has at least a bang average passing defense. So guys, go to underdog, make your selections. If you want to use mine, great. If you want to fade mine, great. If you want to make your own, 
That's even better. There's so many selections to choose from an underdog. It's easy to play and available in over 30 states. Just pick between two and five players across any team, not just your Canes, and decide if they're going to finish higher or lower. One of the easiest fantasy to play games out there, and you can win cold, hard cash in a single game. So sign up with our promo code locked on, and underdog will double your first deposit up to 100 bucks. Deposit 100 bucks, get $100 extra for free. Go to underdogfantasy.com or find the Underdog Fantasy app in the App Store or the Google Store. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code locked on. Get in on the college football pick 'em action today. And thank you for making Locked On Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Um, This one is uh, the utmost importance today, especially because Georgia Tech is one of the better turnover forcing teams uh, in the ACC right now. They forced four turnovers in their win against Virginia Tech last week. And this is a pretty eye-opening stat. I think it was uh, – I, I found this on uh, – I want to credit where credit is due. 24-7 sports on the Inside the U page on their game preview. Kudos to them. The Hurricanes are 0-4 on the season when they give the ball away more than once in a game. If Miami has more than one turnover in a game, they are 0-4 this year. That's just the sign of an offense that's not good enough to overcome mistakes. Okay. when they turn it over more than once. Miami, meanwhile, is 4-1 when it doesn't turn it over more than once. So with zero turnovers or one turnover, Miami's a very respectable 4-1 on the season. Okay? Now, obviously, you know, the more turnovers tend to come against the better opponents, so competition has to say something about that. You know, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets are not a very good team. Uh, You know, their issues are more just with, the caliber of player, whereas Miami's issues are a lot more, you know, internal stuff that we've talked about all season long. The Hurricanes have been playing down to the level of competition and not usually up to the level of better competition. So it's been a real struggle for Miami this year. Uh, You could also talk about motivation, I guess, for this game, because for Georgia Tech, this is their final home game. It's senior day. Um, You know, I, I was reading some of the Georgia Tech blogs and like basically the big argument they make for why Georgia Tech is going to win this game is, well, Miami is, you know, better in most every area, like talent wise. But, you know, Georgia Tech probably wants this one more because it's senior day, final home game and all that. Uh, and that's they're not completely wrong about that, because there have certainly been games this season where Miami hasn't looked like they've wanted it more than the opponent. I don't know where any of the effort was whatsoever against Florida State. They couldn't even keep that game close. Uh, So turnovers are something to keep an eye on. Miami obviously has basically a reverse record when they turn it over less than once or once or less than once in a game. Uh, As far as Georgia Tech's offense, now I do think Miami's D holds the keys to victory in this one. We are not sure with Georgia Tech if it's going to be a returning Jeff Sims at quarterback. He's been dealing with a lower body injury or freshman Zach Pyron starting. Sims has been back practicing the last few days, okay? But either way, Slot receiver Nate McCollum is the top weapon in their passing game. If you can't wrap up and you can't tackle him, he will kill you in yak. He's got 230 yards after the catch this season. But as far as Miami's defense goes, um, if they can play, Miami's defensive front especially, if they can play the way that they did against Virginia a couple of weeks ago, they are going to be the key to victory here, okay? Because the Yellow Jackets offensive line, They are 125th in the nation in pass protection. It's almost dead last. 125th out of 131 teams in pass pro. They give up 300, uh, sorry, not 300. They give up 3.66 sacks per game. If they give up 300 sacks per game, they probably would be on their 50th quarterback by now. But no, they give up nearly four sacks per game. Miami, on the flip side, has one of the best sacking teams in the country and one of the best TFL teams in the country. So you would love to see this play out uh, from a defensive point of view, kind of the way it played out between Miami and Virginia. Obviously, you need your offense to be better than they were against Virginia because Georgia Tech's a little bit better than the Virginia Cavaliers. So, you know, this game could be won or lost on the defensive line for the Miami Hurricanes. I seriously believe that. A couple of recruiting notes I want to get to when we come back here on Locked on Canes. So keep it locked. Folks, we're all getting older. 
I'm almost 40. I'm getting to that big milestone here. Getting older has changed my body, right? I've been fighting off the dad bod for a while, feeling a little bit less like my old self. You know, don't have time to work out because I'm working all day. Uh, but you want energy and you want what your body once had when you were in your 20s. So then I discovered Nugenics and I felt revived and I've started working out like I used to. If you're feeling like you just can't get into shape, it's not your fault. As men age, our body naturally loses free testosterone. That's the man hormone. It happens to every man and it can you know, be made more difficult than to stay in shape and be energetic. You remember when winning felt easy? That's because when you were younger, you were at your peak of your testosterone production. Oh, I miss those days. Uh, we have that. Some people call that the winner's hormone or the man hormone. Wouldn't it be nice to get the winner's edge again and that old swagger back in your step? Nugenics Total T contains man boosting key ingredients like testophen. It's been validated in five clinical studies shown to boost free testosterone levels in men because Nugenics Total T boosts free testosterone that an aging process robs you of. You're going to feel stronger, leaner, more energy and drive, and more passion too. And yeah, your partner is going to notice the difference. Nugenics Total T is the number one selling testosterone booster at GNC. Now, get a complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total T when you text COLLEGE to 231231. Text now and get a bottle of Nugenics Thermo, their most powerful fat incinerator ever, with key ingredients to help you get back into shape fast. Absolutely free. Text COLLEGE to 231231. That's college to 231231. Texting enrolls you into recurring automated text messages. Consent not required to purchase. Message and data rates may apply. Get a complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total Tea when you text college to 231231. Got to love that. Okay, so the Jaden Rashada fallout has been, uh, if you're a Miami fan, if you're the type that just loves to go to war and like argue all day on social media, this has actually been a pretty fun last, you know, 24 hours or so. Cause there's all these like skirmishes breaking out between Miami fans and Gator fans. But if you're the type that just doesn't like all that noise and negativity, you probably were better off just like staying off Twitter and Instagram for the last little bit. Um, so after Jaden Rashada flipped to Florida, which we did a whole episode about that yesterday, by the way. So if you want to check that out, it's available on our audio podcast platforms and on our YouTube channel, talking all about Jaden Rashada flipping to Florida, Emory Williams, what Miami has in that 2023 verbal committed quarterback. But, um, you know, as suspected, it created a blood in the water mentality for other schools, right? Seeing Rashada flipped uh, something that I was told, and this is not bad news because I, I don't think he's following through on any of this, but something that I was told yesterday after shortly after Jane Rashada flipped a handful of big schools started reaching out to Emory Williams, Miami's lone remaining quarterback commit, trying to get him to their schools for visits and I don't have any other way to explain why suddenly there's an uptick in that happening except for schools really want to hurt Miami, right? Because they smell blood in the water. There's chum in the water right now. Oh, my goodness. They just lost their top quarterback in the class. Let's go after the other guy and just destroy their recruiting class. So there, so there are schools requesting Emory Williams. Hey, look, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're telling him all the stuff that, uh, that we see every day. You know, Miami's offense is completely hopeless. They're going to ruin you. If you go there, look at the court, how much worse has Jake Garcia gotten? What happened to Tyler Van Dyke? Like they're preaching him all that negativity and they're trying to get Emory Williams now to really hurt Miami. They're trying to get Emory to visit other places. Um, as far as I can tell, he's not taking the bait, but there definitely has been an uptick in schools wanting to get that young man in for a visit. I, I can only hope, pray, and expect, because I think he's locked in to be a cane, that Emory Williams will stand firm and he will see the opportunity he has at Miami. Now, meanwhile, with everyone smelling blood in the water, so yesterday, all these rumors and reports come up that, hey, Jaden Rashada, this is going to be the first of many. Florida is going to take everybody. Right there, there, there was a report yesterday that Francis Maui Goa is going to be visiting Florida this weekend. Uh, Tommy Kinsler, same thing. You know, they obviously they're going to want to flip 
Malik Bryant. They're going to want to go after Cormani McLean again, right? Cormani, by the way, um, he's he's always so quiet, and he specifically said he was like shutting down all media, like he's not doing interviews between now and signing day. So he's going to be a really tough one to read. I think he's going to be locked in. But with all the rumors about people like Maui Goa and Kinsler, it was really cool early evening yesterday to see these guys come out on their social media and publicly say, no, I am not visiting Florida. My recruitment is not open. I am a cane. Right. It, it just it warmed my heart. Right. Given what a bad day yesterday was with the Rashada stuff and all the negativity, Francis Maui Goa has doubled down and tripled down. He wants to be a cane. Tommy Kinsler, same thing. Ray Ray Joseph, who's always out there, you know, being vocal. Jaden Wayne uh, was very vocal about reaffirming his cane commitment. So it's it's nice to see. And, you know, uh, it's not it's not going to be all bad between now and signing day. Right. Is it possible that Miami loses another one or multiple of their 2023 commits before signing day? Of course, it's possible. I will never tell you it's not. I can tell you I'm not expecting it, but that doesn't mean I'm completely ruling it out. But on the flip side, I think uh, I think you're going to get a couple more big prospects in before this is said and done. Um, I've heard that there are a couple of pretty big time recruits that we expect to announce Miami. It's only a matter of when, not if, and hopefully just for our sanity. This happens within the next couple of weeks, right? And, and obviously, one of those guys that I've been looking at, we did an episode about him a couple of days ago, is the Pancake Honcho, Samson Okunlola, uh, and you know another one of those uh, being uh, Damari Brown, four-star corner. Pancake Honcho is a five-star offensive tackle out of Massachusetts. Uh, Damari Brown is a, a four-star defensive back, a couple of blue chippers. So if, if, if Miami can actually get a couple of – Big time verbal commits, you know, not going to say it's going to completely erase the Rashada thing, um, but, you know, it'll it'll go a long way to bring in some positivity back to the fan base. But you know what else would bring some positivity back to the fan base? Just go out and win a freaking football game today. Can we do that? Can we beat Georgia Tech? Right? Georgia Tech is beatable. Now, they're going to look at us and say the same thing, right? Georgia Tech is looking at Miami, but, yeah, we can beat those guys, right? This, this is a two-way street here, so... Miami needs to bounce back emotionally from a gut-wrenching loss against Florida State last week. And let's hope they can leave Atlanta today with heads held high. That'll do it for our pregame episode. We will have a, a postgame uh, episode tomorrow, so join us for that. And also, if you want immediate postgame content, the reason why I don't put out my locked-ons right after the game is because I host the network radio postgame on uh, on wqam in miami so if you have the odyssey app or if you live in south florida look for 560 wqam right after the game and you'll hear me and former canes quarterback malik rozier breaking it all down for about three hours after the game so join me for that join me here on locked on tomorrow we will talk to you then right here on locked on canes part of the awesome locked on podcast network your team every day